Well, here's an interesting little engine. This is a recent eBay auction win. And I wasn't entirely sure what this was, but I had a better idea than I did with the old Wilson S2. The seller was had listed this as a Bing steam engine. Well, it's definitely German, but I was absolutely convinced it wasn't a Bing. And I was right, and I, I, I was fairly certain it was a Marklin, and, and it is a Marklin. So what we have here is a Marklin 4113-6 donkey engine. A Marklin made several of these in different sizes, and they were all around uh, 1913, that kind of period. So this is a very, very old engine. Now, it's not in bad condition, but it is missing quite a few parts. There should be a safety valve in there. There is a chimney that goes over this. Then if we come around, I'll stop it when it comes around to the to the actual cylinder. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit on that so you can have a look. Now, it's obviously missing the piston and the conrod. On these, it had a flat bladed conrod and it was pinned to the end of the of a small short rod that came out of the piston so it would pivot somewhere about the, here fortunately the eccentric which strap which is this and the eccentric that's all intact and and even the the conrod pin is 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 there you know and this all moves nicely that's all free so it's just a matter of making a, a piston and a conrod basically let's come back out again which i'm sure uh, Oh, I, I should be able to knock something up. You, we've got the bore and the stroke, so that's not uh, going to be a problem. Let's go on around. So what else is there that we've got missing? Oh, yeah, burner's missing. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much, you know, par for the course these days with model steam engines you get off of eBay. The burners are nearly always missing. But I'm sure, uh, uh, again, a being burner will work fine. That is the whistle. Now, the whistle comes out and then goes up. It comes out at right angles and goes up. Uh, that would thread into there. This is more strange because this is the drain tap. Uh, fortunately, there are quite a few very nice pictures of these on on the internet, so you can see exactly. But normally, that would be that. That's not threaded. That's actually soldered in. So I don't know why that's been removed at whatever point in its life it was. Oh yeah, and the other thing is there should be a, a little uh, threaded uh, cap to go on the um, the oiler cup. But I don't think there's anything here that we can't manufacture. I, I'm sure that I can get this going. Uh, I'm gonna strip it all down, give it a good a good clean up, and probably um, repaint the base. And also the cylinder also should be uh, black. But yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was a good find. And I think this is only my third Marklin engine. So that's, that's a great addition to the collection. Yeah, get on, get this stripped down and start work on it. Well, for the past couple of weeks or so, all my activity in the workshop has been based around the renovation and restoration of the little good old Pratt drill press. And I just decided that I needed a bit of break and I wanted to do something different for a, for a day or so. So this little uh, Marklin donkey engine has been kind of like, uh, pulling my attention as it's been sat on the shelf and I thought well yeah <clears throat> I really really yeah I, I really like to do something with this engine well if you remember uh, when we first looked at this there's there is a whole load of stuff missing on this uh, the safety valve here the yeah uh, that should be the whistle that should be a blowdown valve it's all missing the, the regulator valve here is gone um, the little cap on the oiler but of course, most important of all, what's missing is the piston, piston rod and conrod. Uh, I mean, they are obviously the vital components to it, which we need to make. So I thought, right, I'm going to get on and I'm going to have a go at making those. And uh, so that's what I've been doing over the last few days. Let's have a quick look in on this. And I thought I'd just say a few words about how I go about doing this. Now, obviously we have the bore and the depth of the cylinder that's easy that can be measured and we also have the stroke because the crank is on there and obviously the, the, the stroke is simply double the length of the crank between centers there so I know the bore and I know the stroke and I know the depth of the cylinder so 
that's great. That will give me the diameter of uh, the piston. And in this case, the diameter is 10 millimeters. But obviously we're gonna need a little bit more than that. Now, I always find drawing little sketches uh, of whatever it is I'm trying to make very, very useful. So that's basically what I've done here. So I decided that seven mil for the length of the piston would probably be quite reasonable. We've got a depth of 25 mil, that would give me nine mil at either side. And it's, as I said, it's got a 14 mil stroke. So that gives a reasonable amount of movement up and down inside the cylinder. Uh, so, okay, so now we've got the diameter and the, the depth of the piston. We still need to work out all the other dimensions. So how long is the rod, the piston rod, and how long is the con rod? Now, to do that, I went online and I found some really good pictures of one of these donkey engines in pristine condition. And it's a bit of a blow up of one of the pictures that I saw. Now, it's not quite square on. So it's, it's cantered a little bit. However, we can tell an awful lot from this picture. The crank is almost in the vertical position, bearing in mind, obviously, that the cylinder is at an angle, probably something like 30 degrees, I would imagine. However, putting the crank on the engine in that position, I can then guesstimate measuring the con rod. Now you can just about see the pivot point um, or the very end here of the piston rod, as in the fixed rod that's screwed into the piston. Now we know from this crank position that this is a little way off bottom dead center because that's got to come round to about here and this will be at bottom dead center. So I can estimate roughly where, where the piston will be at this point. That then allows me to work out if my piston is seven mil uh, depth, uh, that allows me to work out the length of the piston rod, which I think I think I worked that out to be, I reckon about 11 millimeters. And then from that, we can also work out the length of the con rod because we know the con rod ends very, very shortly inside, just outside here. And by measuring these distances on my actual engine, I worked out the con rod was about 35 mil long and between centers, it was about 28. So, with that information and the other information, bore and stroke and depth of cylinder, we are actually able to manufacture a piston, a piston rod and a con rod. And there, there we go. That's what I came up with. It doesn't look like much, does it? I'll close in on it a bit. No, it doesn't look like much at all. If I put my finger in shot, you can see how small that is. That took me about a day to make all of that. Um, for the piston rod, I basically measured the thickness of the valve rod here uh, and made it roughly the same. I think it's about four mil um, and it looked about right. And again, for the, the diameter of the con rod, I measured the uh, eccentric strap diameter because again, they look similar in the photo. So I think, you know, and, and, it, and it looks about right. We'll, we'll pop it in and, and, and you can have a look. So there you go. And it all, all rotates nicely. So I just thought you might like to see that. I mean, let's close in a little bit to, so you can see what's going on there. There we go. Now, sadly, I'm probably gonna to have to remake the piston. Um, and why am I gonna have to remake the piston? Well, <laughs> never assume anything. I bought a piece of 10 mil brass bar to make the uh, piston out of and without even thinking, I didn't measure it. I just went ahead and made it. And it turns out that my bit of 10 mil brass bar isn't in fact 10 mil, it's about 9.98. <laughs> so the piston is a little bit loose in, in, in the cylinder. It's not very loose, but it is a little bit loose. And I could certainly machine, if I was start with a bigger bit of brass bar, I could certainly machine up something that would be a better fit. So I may well remake that. The piston's fairly easy to make. It's simply just machine to, you know, machine it to size, and drill and tap it for the thread size that I've cut on the 
piston rod and, and and it'll swap out i haven't locked either it in or anything and that will swap out with the with the one i've already made but we'll see I'm, i'll try it with that one to start with and see what happens so yeah so that's where we've got with the uh, with the little donkey engine so far a lot of stuff still to do as i said you know the regulator valve is missing from there the safety valve is missing the whistle is missing and the blowdown valve is missing uh, and the cap on the oiler is missing and i think there should have been a drive pulley on that end of the flywheel there so yeah lots still to do